So it's Priya here and yes, now we have 3 VCS integrated with SOLIDWORKS. We come in as an add-on workbench uh, with two tabs. One is the 3DCS Variation Analyst Home tab, which covers all the basic functions like feature creation, model creation, analysis, and the reporting tool. And then we have a 3DCS add-on tab where we have the mechanical, complaint, and AAO functions. So now then we have a 3DCS model navigator tree, which exactly resembles the uh, SOLIDWORKS tree here. So the very first time when you bring in a model inside SOLIDWORKS, you need to do an update model, which will extract all the information from the SOLIDWORKS tree and put it into the 3DCS model navigator tree. So this, those, these two trees need to be uh, in sync always. Like for example, any changes done to the SOLIDWORKS tree, like uh, adding new paths, deleting, reordering, renaming, the 3DCS model navigator tree gets updated by doing an update model. Could, yeah. yeah, could you go back to the variation and show where that update model button is? Oh yeah, this is the update model button where you need to do. This would be the only active button when you bring in a, a model fresh into 3DCS and this needs to be done first in order to get the other functions active. So now that we're integrated, um, you can just open up a SolidWorks assembly, which would be this a medical lift assist. Yeah. Update model and you will get our tree when you are in our workbench and then you can start doing your tolerance analysis. Yeah, so I got a patient lift model assembly here. Uh, you can see how the parts are deviating. That's because of the applied moves and tolerances that I have added to the model. So let me go ahead and show the measurement. Uh, here I'm going to need to measure the angle between these two rods here. So if I come in here, you can see the measurement that's getting highlighted on the screen. So I'm going to take an angle measurement and that measures the angle between those two rods. So let me go ahead and separate the model and run through the uh, moves that I've written to assemble this model here. The one main thing here is uh, I've used a multi-stage assembling process which assembles this plate and rod to a fixture tool which in turn assemble the whole sub-assembly into the top level assembly to the spine rod. So now let me run through the each moves here. So let me animate through. You can see how the plate goes into the fixture tool first, followed by the rod. This happens on the right side. So now that's the sub-assembly move. Now I'm gonna assemble this whole sub-assembly into, into the spine rod. So first thing is placing the spine rod in position and then bringing in the rod there. And we have a pattern move here at this stage, which aligns the whole pairs of the plate and the spine rod. There you go. So next, on the other side. And when you look into the move list, I've, for an example, I've used uh, a combination of both analyst and mechanical moves so that I can cover both and show you the a model can be built with any combination. So the other set of moves uh, which assembles the rest of the parts would be all mechanical. So I'm fixing the spine bar, putting in the piston rod, the bar, then goes the arm, and finally that's attaching. And also the main purpose of having the mechanical move here, this upper rod is free to rotate up and down, and that's a motion, so that's why I've used, used a mechanical move combination in it. So if we stop right here for a second, Priya, yep. uh, the key here is you can see those uh, parts hanging out on the side. You know, because this is a multi-stage, we can build sub-assemblies. They can have their own tolerances and their own, own build processes and their own measurements. It's like a little mini model. Then that finished sub-assembly can get assembled at the next stage. And so you can track your variation through your multi-stage system. Um, Plus, that rod assembly just bolts on. And so it's bolting on two, you know, two bolts through two holes, which requires a special move, which Priya was mentioning, which was the pattern move, that's going to look at the bolt position tolerance, hole size tolerance, pin size tolerances, and it's going to adjust that assembly to fit. And if it can't fit, it will 
pick out a no-build situation. So when we get to our results, you can see the effect of that pattern.